get here. David, can you hear now? I can yes. hear you now. Yes, thank you. Okay, okay. Yeah, we, we turned it off uh, during your presentation, but now the microphone is on. Um, I would like to invite uh, the audience uh, to make questions and comments for uh, Professor Dapis. <laughs> While we're waiting for uh, people who are still hesitant to make comments, I'll, I'll ask for the first question. Um, so first, uh, thank you, David. You show that uh, Vietnam has not been uh, doing well, uh, has not gone well during the past um, seven or eight years. Um, and particularly when we look at the growth of Vietnam, is the growth that come mainly from you know brute force, adding more uh, uh, labor, adding more capital. But the quality of um, of, of growth is not that uh, that high comparatively. Um, what what is the reason behind that? Um, what's the difference between uh, the economic growth that we have here in in uh, in Vietnam and uh, and the, 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 the kind of growth that uh, China is having? Um, that's the first question. Um, any questions or uh, comments you have? Uh, I saw good night, David. Uh, and thank you for the presentations. I also would like to... Uh, David, can you hear over there? Yes. David's comments on the change in the governance. Look at the audience. Uh, Hold on a second. Up. I want to make sure that uh, people in Ho Chi Minh City can... Uh, can David, you us? David, can you speak louder? Uh, can you hear yeah. us? Yeah. Okay. okay. So another question that I have is, um, in one of the slides you have is uh, showing that um, the change in the governance in Vietnam has not been as great as the other countries. So I would like you first to clarify what do you mean by governance change? And the second question is how do you think is the governance change uh, can impact or influence how the economic development in Vietnam? Uh, I, I didn't get the last question. The second one, what I, the governance I got, but the second one, just to ask it again. Yeah, so the second question is, can you uh, comment on how the governance change can impact the economic development in Vietnam? I would like to see, uh, we know that from the graph that the governance change is not as great, but then how can uh, Vietnam improve that and how can, how can uh, governance change can help Vietnam to be more competitive uh, with the other competitors in the, in the uh, area? Okay, um, let, let me try and answer that. The, the governance uh, numbers I uh, presented are from the World Bank they have six dimensions of governance, uh, you know, things like rule of law, regulatory quality, control of corruption, um, and they give percentile ratings uh, with typical modesty to the whole world and, um, you know, pretty much every country. And I just added up the six percentile ratings to get, you know, roughly 200 or whatever, 250. Uh, for the various countries out of 600, which would be the maximum score. David, David, hold on a second. Can you, t uh, in Ho Chi Minh City, can you turn the camera to what, uh, David, please? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, so, you know, um, this is uh, based on a lot of surveys and, and studies, uh, often of investors. Uh, and, you know, I, I think the obvious conclusion is for both China and Vietnam that uh, those dimensions of governance have simply not improved very much. They've improved a little, but not nearly as fast as uh, many other countries that are also competing for investment. And if you have uh, the choice of investing in a country in which uh, you have better regulation or a better rule of law uh, or better control of corruption uh, or one where it's not so good, uh, a reasonable investor would, you know, do business where it's easier to do. Uh, and, and I think, uh, to some extent, that's uh, what's been happening. Now, you know, how do you improve governance? Well, um, you know, things like, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, control of violence and things like that, I think Vietnam is already doing very, very well. I, I don't think that's a major uh, problem. Uh, but uh, for other dimensions, um, I think you, there needs to be uh, some thought given within Vietnam about uh, various aspects of policy. For example, compared to five or ten years ago, I think the press was more active and more open in Vietnam than it is now. So even compared to your own relative past, I think the ability of uh, journalists to uh, identify uh, corrupt or inefficient practices has been diminished uh, and is less than it was. If you allowed a degree of freedom equal to what it was just a few years ago, that would probably push your governance up. Um, and it would probably also make it more difficult. I'll give, an example would be the um, long time, is it long, what, the airport outside of uh, Saigon? Long time. Um, you know, that now is being debated before the General Assembly. That's the sort of thing that raises governance. Uh, you know, that would not have been done a few years back. And I think it, 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 some of it is lessons from Venetian and so on, but it, it's a feeling that you need to have proper review of major investment decisions. And I think the government in this case, the, uh, the parliament, is moving in that direction. Uh, so I, there are things you're doing, there's more you could do, um, but if you move in that direction, then I think your governance will improve. That's an example. Thank, thank, thank you, David. Is there any uh, other quick question or comments for David? Uh, um, Professor Malaski have a question for you. So hey, David. Um, so I, I really enjoyed that presentation as always. It's always really enlightening. I did have I have two sort of small questions about this. So the first is. Beyond the governance improvements, what are the sort of the structural reforms you would suggest that might that might help bolster Vietnam's path back to where it was before? And the second is, in all of your graphs when you look at them, there's this tremendous decline in just about everything after WTO entry. And I wonder if you think that's just a coincidence, or if there's something about WTO entry that is that has um, had an effect on on Vietnam's economic trajectory. Okay, well, first of all, I was using the, the media freedom as an example uh, of governance, and in, in that case, uh, I think things were more open then than they are now. Uh, of course, there are other aspects, like the public review I referred to, where you, I think you're better now than you were a few years ago. So I'm not saying you should go back to the future. Uh, in every respect, I'm saying that you should look at the things that promote governance, and in some cases you've already been doing them in the past, but have let up some. In other cases, you're moving uh, in the right direction and, and to do more of that. Uh, obviously, a rule of law, uh, a uh, you know more transparency, all that you know sort of motherhood issue uh, is is desirable, and um, I, I think. You know, you, from doing business uh, surveys, again, the World Bank does those, the governance, you get pretty good feedback on an annual basis about how you're doing compared to other countries. Uh, so, you know, I, I think using that mechanism uh, to rate yourself is, is a reasonable step. Now, the WTO, I think, you know, the whole world has slowed down since the global financial crisis. Um, and I think what what happened with the WTO, <coughs> excuse me, is China used the WTO as a lever against its entrenched state enterprises. In other words, they saw the need to reform, just like the Japanese, they used foreign pressure to help them transform their economic system. And that's one reason why uh, they did reform many of the SOEs, and they did grow relatively fast. Um, I think I what think Vietnam did to join the WTO and then try to figure out how not to implement it. They, they basically uh, wanted uh, to keep things more or less the same and, and were looking for ways not to reform. 
and so they put billions of dollars into Venus. Uh, you know, that was not exactly against the WTO, but it certainly was not taking advantage of it uh, to, uh, you know, promote a reformed and more efficient economy. And the result of policies like that is that the total factor productivity that we see drop very sharply and to David, we cannot hear you. I think the connection of uh, internet uh, in Ho Chi Minh City, uh, is, is, uh, uh, city right now is uh, having a problem. I heard that there's a, a cable uh, uh, issues uh, uh, in Vietnam. So, um, um, but um, I, well, you know, I just want to thank uh, Professor Davis uh, for uh, his uh, excellent talk. Um, um, so uh, a round of applause for him. <laughs> With that, I would like to, perfect, uh, to, to invite Professor Jay Rosengart um, uh, to the podium. Um, um, Jay is an expert on Indonesian development. He just written uh, in a very interesting and uh, a book on Indonesia. He's uh, also a public finance uh, uh, expert. I uh, have written a best. Uh, the best uh, public finance uh, uh, textbook, um, um, and uh, Jay have a, a minor interest in Vietnam. I, uh, I plan to make it uh, a major one, uh, so that's why I, I have it here. And he have a, um, a talk that is entitled um, "Country as Crossroads: A Comparative Look at Vietnam and Indonesia." <laughs> 